If you end up liking this tutorial, check out the comments for a full course on Roblox Studio. But with that being said, welcome to the first um, episode, I guess you could call it, of the Roblox scripting tutorial, right? So all I'm going to teach in this series of episodes is just how you can script in Roblox. So let's start off with actually making a script. So I'll put it inside of server script service, just a regular white script, okay? So what I want to teach you about is just variables, okay? Printing and variables. You know, what are variables, what can be a variable, what cannot be a variable, and so on. But first, I'm going to teach you about printing, okay? The way you print is you just say print, like so. And then you do two brackets. And inside of here, uh, anything inside of here will be printed out to the output window. So if I say one, two, three, for example, and if I run the game right now, then it's going to print out one, two, three in the input, right? So prints are good for kind of like like testing right so if you if you have like an error somewhere or like if something isn't working as intended then you can use prints right to figure out like like m maybe some value is incorrect or maybe you know the code isn't running here for some reason so you know prints are great for you know reading values reading this they can print out text you know like hello into you know two quotation marks so that's going to print out hello there we go so that's kind of the idea of printing right anything you put in these brackets will be printed out over here even if you put nothing so literally just nil which is nothing like if, if the value you put in here is nothing then it's going to print out nil so it's going to always print something out okay um now let's talk about variables the way you create a variable is you say local okay so you say local and then you give it a name so the name i'll just call it var yeah sure i'll just call it var you can call it, you can name it whatever you want as long as it's not a word that Roblox code already uses. So I can't name a variable local because like Roblox already uses the word local to create a variable. So I can't do local local like that. It's not going to let me do that. Right. So it has to be a new word, which doesn't um, like again, like it, which isn't a word that Roblox uses. And then you say equals. So what this is going to do is it's going to make this variable called var equal to, to some value. So I can say 100. So then if I print out var, we're going to print out 100 because we made a variable called var, which is equal to 100. So the, yeah, now it's going to, it's going to print out var, which is 100. And because var is a number, we can add onto it. So I can say var plus one. So if I print out var plus one, it's going to, it's going to give me 101. Now, the thing about variables is that they can be basically any value that's inside of Roblox, right? So it could be a number. It could be a string, which is, you know, like a piece of text. Um, it could be a Boolean, which is a true or false value. So bo Booleans is true or false, right? It can be a color, right? So it can be a color. Um, I mean, let's see, what, what other values do we have? Um, vector three, C frame. So I'll, I'll talk about C frames and vector in, in a few, in like the next uh, episode. But variables can be effectively any value. They could be nil. <laughs> you can make a variable equal to nothing, right? Um, and yeah, so basically almost every single value can be assigned to a variable, right? Um, yeah, and then, you know, if we just print out that variable, we're going to end up printing the value. Um, now, the thing about variables as well is let's say I have a variable called hello, right? And then I'll, I'll just print it out over here. If I want to change the variable, then I would just say, well, so I, I, I just say the name of the variable, no local, I just say the name, and then I can make it equal to something else. So local creates the variable, but then just saying the, the name of the variable will um, change its value. So I create the variable and its value is hello, and then on the very next line, I change its value to be by. And so when I print out the, the variable now, its value is by, so it's gonna print by. And the great part about this as well is that when you're changing the variable, it doesn't have to be a string. So when we're creating a variable, it's hello, but I could set it equal to be one, two, three, right? And it's gonna be equal to one, two, three. So that's the great part of Roblox variables is that they don't have, once a variable is made, it's very flexible, you know? Like it doesn't have to be a string. You can change it to be a number. You can change it to be a false or a true or a nil. Like you could change it to be any value 
and it doesn't just have to be a string. Because I know like some programming languages have this, where like if you create a variable that's a string, then you can't change it to something that's not a string. Um, so yeah, so Roblox is very efficient in this regard. And the next thing, which I think is honestly one of the more important ones, is you can make variables equal to the items inside of your game. So let's say I make a part, right? Just a standard part. So it's a, it's a part inside of the workspace. I can assign this variable to be equal to this item. And the way I do this is I just say, so we know that this part is inside the workspace. So I can just say workspace dot part, like so. Or if you want to be safe, you could do colon wait for child part. So what this does is it just makes sure that like the part is actually loaded, right? Just because like if, if we just do dot part and the part isn't loaded, it's going to give us an error. So I like to do wait for child because then we know that everything has loaded in. And so now this var is equal to this part, like so. So if I print out the var, there we go. As you can see now, it's, you know, <laughs> we, we have the variable of the part. So that's episode one. And in episode two, I'm going to show you how you can actually, you know, script the parts, how you can change their properties and how you can access their built-in events and functions.